Alright, how's everyone doing today? So what I'm going to be showing you how to do today is essentially make this a phone case model that can be 3D printed and actually used on a phone. Now I learned how to do this by trial and error and I couldn't find a good tutorial on YouTube so I thought it would be a good opportunity to go ahead and show you how I made a phone case for this very particular phone. I went ahead and made this and I'm going to show you the process that I used for creating this phone case. So in this tutorial we're going to be using a program called Blender which is free and I love it and I've done tutorials on it in the past so if you want to learn how to use Blender I have another video on the channel that shows you the very basics and we're also going to be using a program called Tinkercad but the, the main part of the tutorial is going to be in Blender so the very first thing you're going to want to do when designing a phone case is get the measurements of the phone now I used a caliper to figure out the dimensions of the phone. You want the length, width, and height of the phone because we're going to be creating in Blender exactly the dimensions that are going to be printed out. Blender is cool in that you can use millimeters to design. So um, what I'm going to do is click on this little icon over here and click on metric. Right? And what that will allow me to do is change the dimensions of this default cube to the dimensions of the phone. So I'm going to click N and or type N rather and I'm going to switch the dimensions to the actual dimensions of the phone. So I know that the phone is 72 millimeters wide and it is 139 millimeters tall tall? Yes, tall and 10 millimeters thick. Okay? So this looks huge, but this is actually the the size of um, your, your standard phone um, in millimeters in Blender. I don't know why it's so much bigger than the, the default grid, um, but it just is. So the reason I made the phone case, or <laughs> rather, why I made the phone, is because we're going to be building around this phone. So what I'm going to do is go ahead and duplicate the the the, the quote-unquote phone that we made here and I'm gonna change the color because one of these blocks is going to be the case and the other is going to just be our reference to the actual phone size so let's go ahead and uh, I'll, I'll color this this one I'll, I'll say this is gonna be the phone so I'll color it black alright I'm gonna add a new material and switch the color to black and this will be our case um, I'll, I'll change the color to this to green just to make it cool. So, first thing I'm going to want to do is turn this rectangle, this rectangular prism, into a plane. So, what I'm going to do is switch to edit mode and select the top four vertices and delete them. Okay, so we have a plane that is the length and height of the phone size. Alright, next thing I'm going to do is switch to orthographic view and I'm looking. Um, from the top down and what I want to do is make this phone case quote unquote just a little bit bigger than the phone itself so because um, obviously it's a case you want it bigger than the phone but we're gonna be building this from the inside out okay so I'm gonna make this just big enough so that the phone will fit inside of it um, you'll see what I mean just follow along and it'll make more sense as we go um, but what I'm gonna do is scale the Y so it's just just a little bit bigger um, because this is where the phone's going to be sitting in, inside of. And what I want to do is round the corners here. So you can do that by in edit mode holding control shift and plus B as in boy. And this will allow you to bevel the um, edges. Um, and now that I look at it, I can't really see it. So I'm going to switch to wireframe mode by pushing Z. And again I'm gonna hold control shift B and this is a very sensitive tool um, you have to really play with it to get a hang of it but when you move the mouse along the corner here you can see it starts to bring the corners in um, and if you look at the bottom you can see um, I, I can't even read it but if you look down at the bottom it says segments what I want to do is crank up the number of segments I'll, I'll say I'll crank it up to like eight okay and then you just gotta play around with it but what I wanna do is just bring in the corners a little bit 
Okay. Um, it's, like I said, it's very sensitive, and I'm trying to get it. And that looks pretty good. Okay. So we have nice round corners. And next, what we want to do is start building from the bottom up. So I'm going to select everything in edit mode so that all the vertices of our quote unquote case are selected. And I'm going to switch to the front view and push E to extrude up. And like I said, we're building from the inside out. So right now, this is going to be the inside of our case. So I'm going to go just above the phone there. And that looks pretty good. And I'm going to go back to the front view. And this time, I'm going to extrude and then scale. I'll start with X. All right, so extrude, scale, X. And um, let me go from the front again, because I want to look at how this looks. So. Uh, scale X and this is literally the little lip that is going to hold the phone in the case so I want to make sure I'm just going above the phone but not so far that I can't snap the phone in the case and I'm also going to scale the Y so that it's also doing the same thing just a little bit lip over the phone and that looks pretty good now I'm going to look at the front again and I'm going to give some thickness to the case by extruding up and I don't know how thick you want the, the case itself but um, I'll make it a little a little bit thick like that and then top view I want to extrude again and scale X and this time I'm going beyond the first layer that we made because this is going to be the outside of our case and also scale Y same idea and then finally we want to extrude down the Z and go below where we started originally because this is actually going to be the thickness of our bottom um, I don't want to go too far and then finally just hit F to fill it okay and let's see how it looks by getting out of wireframe mode and out of edit mode Okay, this is our case, and also out of um, orthographic view. Now, this now that I'm looking at it, it might I may I may have made the um, the the walls the the lip of the case a little bit too big. See, I don't know in real life if I could actually snap the phone in there. That would be really hard to get that in there. So a lot of it is just tweaking, and um, unless you're making a case for the particular phone, the uh, Yosera C673, you're probably not going to use these dimensions anyway. So a lot of it is going to be tweaking on your part, which I certainly did. But the good thing about Blender is you can always come back to the Blender file and go to edit mode and you can you can tweak all your, you know, all the vertices that you made. Um, you know, if, if I wanted to make the lip a little bit smaller, what I could do is, you know, select the um, the corners here and actually change that. All right, that's what I love about Blender is that it's, it's so um, uh, customizable even after um, you've created a file. Okay, so maybe that would fit. But ultimately we have our phone case uh, model and what I'm going to do is get rid of our our reference of the actual phone and I want to just export the phone case itself. Okay, so I'm going to export it to an STL file and I'll put it right on the desktop here. Um, I'll call it phone case and export it. And then what I'm going to do is go ahead and pull it into Tinkercad. Now, Tinkercad is a great program. I, I, I absolutely love it. Um, you do have to make an account if you want to use it. But you just go to www.tinkercad.com, make an account real quick, and then you can go ahead and start designing. So what I'm going to do is, once I open a project in Tinkercad, I'm going to import the exported Blender file. And you can see this is our phone case. Okay, So this is where I like to do all the customizing. And when I was making the, 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 the case that, that I printed, what I did was I actually took the phone, put it on a piece of paper, and traced the the outline of the phone, and I marked where there were buttons. So, for example, there were buttons up here, volume buttons. And what I did in Tinkercad was I pulled in a cube, made it a hole, 
and basically just positioned it in such a way that I could have um, a little gap where where any buttons were. And you can play around if you want the the hole in your phone to actually have bars coming over top of it. You can do that, but I actually prefer to have just 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 a gap where buttons are. It just makes it so much easier to print, um, and it makes the phone case a little bit more flexible so that you can actually bend it a little bit when you're putting the phone inside of the case. And um, you know, it, it also had a camera in the back, so I, I lined it all up. And this is also where you're going to have some trial and error where you're going to be um, figuring out exactly how you want the um, gaps on the phone to um, show up and you want everything lined up correctly okay so if you have a power button on the top you're gonna go ahead and you know just basically put gaps wherever you need holes for your um, uh, various buttons and switches on whatever phone you're making a case for but say I got all the the, the gaps lined up what you're gonna go ahead and do is export it for 3d printing and you're gonna go ahead and print that file and you're gonna walk around town being the coolest cat who ever had a 3d printed phone case or the only cat I don't know exactly how many people are walking around with 3D printed phone cases but at least now with this tutorial you can do it in a relatively easy way but um, I like to think of it as a very customizable way and I hope you enjoyed watching this tutorial if you like videos like these go ahead and subscribe and I will hopefully see you next time